Welcome to the Big Biz Show. I'm your number one fan, man. Woo! Featuring insight and analysis that's second to most. You don't impress me. With Russ T. Nails. Boogily, boogily, do. And Sully something. You think he's a real man when you're being tucked in. Taking a professional look at the markets and investing in stuff through bloodshot eyes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just gibberish. Now, here's Russ and Sully. I'm the Jeff Television Studios in sunny San Diego, California on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Clear Channel Media, Biz Talk Radio Network, now part of Biz TV. Big Biz Show's on the air. I want you to go to centechglobal.com. Yeah. I want you to check that out. Um, I, I, I want to really kind of review what we talked about last week in studio today. Uh, Eric Basu is the CEO of Centech Global. Eric, thanks so much for coming in the studio. Thanks, sir. Appreciate so here, so let's talk about this. Um, I don't think people really. I, 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 there was so many emails I got last week, <laughs> and I, there were so many takeaways. I think we all know we're in trouble with respect to all of our personal data. I think all the businesses kind of know they've got to put up, you know, and I, for lack of a better word, some sort of a firewall or something. But it's much worse than that. This is not just about being safe. This is actually. The, you, the, the word attack was used so many times in the interview with you last week. <laughs> I think that's what rung through. So first of all, talk to us about what Centech Global does, and then let's get into the, into the brass tacks about this. Sure. So we protect uh, military systems. We protect uh, commercial systems companies from uh, cyber attacks. That's what we do. We, uh, we go against the bad guys. Um, we actually pretend to be bad guys. We'll go into a company, and we'll uh, um, you know act as if we're bad guys. Yeah, that's a lot of fun sometimes. You go into a chat room, and <laughs> hey, I'm really, hey. Well, but the point is, leather though, but there's yeah. something to that. We're not talking about just... Yeah. Keeping their systems safe because yeah. these systems are under attack. Yeah. You know, this, this, it's like when you get the uh, Nigerian letter scam. Okay? Oh. You know, yeah. when they say, okay, just got one. The, yeah. But the issue is, is that you're watching the guy try to rip you off. How often does that happen in your life? Normally you right. come home and everything's gone. Yeah. Right? You're, you're going, your wallet's it, missing. Right. Yeah. But, but now, oh, so, and so these guys are watching it as they're happening, and, and your job is to go out there. And, and get in between? You, you, guys, you guys prevent that or just make their system stronger? What's, what's the idea? So we'll go in there and pretend to be the bad guy. So uh, uh -oh. you, you know this. When I was active duty, I was a SEAL. And so we did the same thing in the, uh, the SEAL teams is we acted as, as if the bad guys. We did target analysis. How would you go in there and take down a, um, you know, a particular base? You may not go after the base. You may go after the power supply that has only one uh, way of getting to the base. It's yeah. one power supply 10 miles away that's unprotected. That's the way to do and it. And same sort of thing uh, when you're going in from a cybersecurity perspective is you go in there and you hit everything. Uh, the way they got into Target, they didn't get in through the main systems, which were locked down. They got in through the um, air toilet paper system. supply or something. They got in the <laughs> yeah, air conditioning air system. Conditioning. Maybe even oh, toilet paper <laughs> supply. So yeah. if there's yeah. if there's if there's a, a mouse hole in there somewhere, right. I mean, yeah. like into this building, in right. the armor. Our, our broadcast lines, right? Exactly. If there's some yeah. way to get in. That's that's how they're going to get in. That's, yeah, and uh, and they're economically motivated, and so you need. To, it takes a certain personality to do that, though. You have to be willing to go in there and you just bang at it, you bang at it, and you bang at it, and you finally find one thing that works, and then yeah. you go exploit that. But that's those the tweakers big these days. Yeah. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, that's the big right. payoff for these guys to sit there probably all day. Going, oh, maybe how, how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? And I'm that's sure there the is some sort of a yeah. some sort of a Morpheus Hall of Fame for these guys. Is, uh, I mean, I mean, real, right? The, the really good ones are known. Yeah, they're known in the community. Um, uh, you know, and then there are groups as well. I'm not going to name like any taggers. of them. Like taggers. It, yeah. it really, oh, that's George's work. It really that's is. Exactly this, right. this guy, I know. Great, I can, great, yeah, the way he went in and stuff like that, they yeah. have a, a yeah. signature approach to, to right. busting up the, uh, yeah. the program. You are based in wow. San Diego, California. That's correct. As we are. And, and yeah. it's important. Even though we're a national show, I want to bring that up because um, most estimates um, are, are $100 billion in losses worldwide, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But here in San Diego, the economy, the cyber economy, not the cybersecurity, but the cyber economy is upwards of how much money in just this one? one $1.5 billion. That's the equivalent so the, of three Super Bowls. So the eighth yeah. largest city in the United States mm -hmm. yep. in this just one city. Yep. What, do you have any estimate for nationwide? I mean, it's, it's got to be $50 billion, $75 billion nationwide. Uh, it, it's got to be a lot bigger. I mean, the point, yeah. I mean, so basically what it comes down to, to your point, we are all business our investments, our personal stuff, is under threat um, uh, of, of attack daily. And more and more, and more and more every day. I mean, if you, you know, oh, if you geez. go back 15, well, if you go back 15 years. Another, another one of the guests that we don't ever <laughs> want to talk to. Tomorrow, it's going to suck even worse. We've got the tax right, guy on the here. Well, 15 years ago, I mean, when you went into your bank account, I mean, you worried about somebody uh, yeah. basically walking into your bank physically and then trying to impersonate you or, or right. kind of check or yeah. do something like that yeah. or, uh, you know, um, forge a check. Sure. Now I've got my bank access to my cell phone. I've got uh -huh. it on, online. I've got all these different ways somebody can go in there and take all my money. And come into, well, now that you can control your home, 
from your cell phone. Great and point. if they crack in there, it's like, oh, right. just open your door right. and uh, turn off the alarm and boom, boom. Yeah. yeah, and what if you have a, a commercial building where you do the exact same thing? You've got your air conditioning systems, you've got your cooling systems, you've got your alarm systems. Yeah, that's a lot harder. The same thing. I tried. Yeah. I'm trying right now. In fact, <laughs> trying to bust into... <laughs> The, uh, you know, the, the, the interesting part of this thing is, wow. the, the and we talked about this last time, you brought this up, yeah. is that the risk to companies, and let's just talk in terms of uh, your investment with Charles Schwab, or your investment with, you know, Gabriel Mism, or, or, or Matt Pavitran like that. Mm -hmm. You know, our money is all, you know, we're using username and passwords. Right. Those guys are doing the best they can. Right. But we are, you know, it's easy for me to wire money from one of my accounts to another of my accounts on my own from my iPhone. Too easy. Now, if the, if the, well, that's the point. The, yeah. the way he looks yeah. at me and he says, yeah. right. Too he's easy. a Navy SEAL on me, and there's like a yeah. light bulb hanging over. Yeah. But the point is, though, if, if you think about those terms, yeah. if I can do that on my iPhone when I'm driving, right. and that shouldn't. means that, there's, that, that, that it's too easy to do. Like you say, it's too right. easy. So I don't uh, think the people upstairs, I mean, and let's face it, every, every major company in this, in this country serves at the, the board director serves at the pleasure of the shareholders. CEO serves the pleasure of the board of directors. That's, I mean, that's just how it's, that's just how it's done. Right. Well, I don't, I mean, I think the shareholders know there's a problem. And right. I think the CEO knows there's a problem. Do the board members know there's a problem? I don't think enough of them have enough. Um, so most board members aren't 20-something-year-olds uh, who, you know, grew up playing video games. Most yeah, so the millennials probably have this stuff figured out. It's the rest uh, of us dinosaurs. They're, they're more aware of it. It's kind of like uh, knowing if you grow up in a bad neighborhood, you know what time you don't walk down the street. Uh, yeah. um, and if you never grew up there, then you might go walk down at the wrong time when the yeah. gangs are hanging out in the corner. Same thing with being a millennial. So they you're might go in a little more prepared to protect themselves. or They have a better awareness of it. And I think better the, passwords, I bet, too. At the board <laughs> level, they get briefed by people that are experts in this. And so at Target, yeah. they had just passed their PCI compliance a couple months before getting hacked. They were compliant, but they weren't secure. All right, stay there. Hold, take, take oh, right there. big yeah. difference, obviously. All right, here's the deal. Eric Basu, Centec Global. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the lessons he learned from Black Hat Asia. And I want to talk about these, uh, these wiper APT attacks. I want to talk about the Target thing. You're never going to get out of here. Eric Basu is with Centec Global. <laughs> CentecGlobal.com is their website. Russ and Sully, I'll give you some market updates. Also, Steve J.J. Wise is going to join me in a few minutes. It's the Big Biz Show, bigbizshow.com. Follow us on Twitter, Big Biz Radio. Right here next to me, Eric Basu, uh, former Navy SEAL. Now, did I say former? You're always a Navy SEAL, right? Can we always say you're a Navy SEAL? Uh, yeah, I don't it it's, a, it's a badass <laughs> thing. I don't think we're allowed to talk to him in that. You can, well, you're not, no, you're not allowed <laughs> to. You, 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 you know where he is now. Where is he? I don't even see him. <laughs> Eric is with Centec Global, of course, uh, CentecGlobal.com, the world of cybersecurity. Yeah. Economic impact worldwide, $100 billion in losses. Now, I want to talk about lost productivity. Yeah. Lost productivity is not even included in those losses. Those no. are just dollar losses. Lost productivity exactly. after the fact when a company's not ready. Right. So let's say Charles Schwab, and I'm not saying Charles Schwab has a problem, so I don't right. want to get the emails. Disclaimer. But let, let's, say a money, let, let's say a big financial institution, whoever right. it may be. Right. Um, Bernie so. Madoff's group. Okay, which is no longer in existence. Fine, sure. I think that's yeah. a safe one. <laughs> Let's say they suffer a breach. Right. That is when the lost productivity starts, because right. that's when the time suck begins, right? Right. right. And yeah. your job is to make sure it doesn't happen in the first place. Our job is to help the companies figure out where the weaknesses are before yeah. the bad guys do. How do you do that, though? So let's talk about You talked sure. last time about what was called a pen test. Penetration test. Penetration test. Yep. All yep. right, what does exactly. that mean exactly? So basically what we do is we go in and pretend to be a bad guy. So we have people that go to the Black Hat conferences. Oh, you're they're, good. Yeah, they're certified <laughs> ethical hackers. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's actually a term, certified ethical hacker. CEH. That's certified C -E ethical hacker. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. The good guys. All good right. Guys. Were they, are, are any converted... You know, uh, were they bad guys? You caught them. They went, all right, we'll play for your side now. Some of those guys who do that, we don't do that. Right. Um, our, our guys don't do that. Yeah, how do you, I don't want to get, get up and chase around. Here, but how do you recruit guys like that? How do you find them? At the conferences, mostly. Yeah. No kidding. Um, yeah. So you wow. go there. There's a certain mentality. I mean, it's the yeah. same kid that, you know, when he was a um, kid would break aside, apart his transistor radio and put it back together right. again. Mm -hmm. Same sort of kid as a great hacker. See, they didn't have crystal meth back then. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> they, they just, but they actually did something with their, and, yeah, now, they're, and now they're doing something with their wow. career. Wow. Is what happens. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's talk about uh, some of what you, the, the Black Hat Conference sure. um, that you went to. Tell you, now, what you were just saying is your job is to make them safer. You right. go in and, and you, you do the penetration test. Exactly. You get the guys to, to act like they're the bad guys. Right. And you were just at a Black Hat conference in Singapore helping you to do that better. Is that right? Exactly, yeah. It, not me personally. I was there basically looking at, uh, you know, a couple, a few, a few different things. Yeah. One, of the, you know, one of the major uh, um, presentations there was on how to hack buildings. And people don't really get that. You know, they're sitting there thinking, well, I'm, my systems are all secure. I'm good. Mm -hmm. well, what about your landlord? And you think, well, why would I care? If they hack the building, what are they going to do? Um, well, they can do a lot of things. So, I mean, uh, that's wow. how they got into Target. They came in through the HVAC system. So that's a whole other company that started 
uh, I can help your building become, well, you let's, know, put extra thick walls well, or whatever they do. Well, let's talk yeah. about that in, in terms of, so there's a very good lesson here. Yeah. So last, um, oh my wow. goodness, what was it, 2000 and I'm going to call it 11. We had yep. a blackout here. Yep. Now, Cal ISO. Cal ISO is the air traffic controller of all of the energy in California. San Diego suffered a massive blackout to the point where we thought it was terrorism right yep, then. I remember that. Cal ISO comes out and says this year, okay, all of our systems in this lovely state of California were bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Turns out Oops. that the building that we're in called the U.S., the other offices like Arizona, Nevada, yeah. oh, and yeah. all of our bordering states yep. had the problem. That's exactly what you're talking about, isn't yes, it? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, the systems are so interconnected now, you can't uh, yeah. claim that you're going to be completely isolated. You know, so my iPhone is locked down. Well, you know, that's great if your iPhone's locked down, except it hops onto somebody's Wi-Fi network, right. and that Wi-Fi network isn't locked down, and you're passing information somebody captures it, uh -huh. boom, they just mm -hmm. compromised your Next information. Next thing you know, your girlfriend sees that picture you meant to erase. <laughs> See? <laughs> what, <laughs> See? What was the biggest thing that you saw that surprised... I mean, you've been in this business for a long time. Sure. I, mean, you, I mean, your whole life, uh, your career was was sort of protecting. Yeah. So, how, what it was... Like, the la every time you go, you learn... And there's a big... There's got to be a new takeaway every time. Right. Last time, what was it? What was the big aha moment for you last time? Um, the, the big aha moment for me was actually not at this black hat, but the previous black hat when they talked about hacking medical devices. Right. And there was a guy named Barnaby Jack uh, who, uh, unfortunately, through a tragic accident, passed away just before he was about to present, who was going to present on how you could hack a pacemaker from 30 feet away. Um, so we have medical <laughs> devices now, and it could be uh -huh. a pacemaker. That is an aha moment. All right. That hey, is you know an aha moment. Yeah. You're kind of an idiot. <laughs> so it's just like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and uh, Log he, off. And it was, um, yeah, um, so we have medical devices that are being put up there, and it could be your insulin pump at home. It could be your, you know, your chemotherapy wow. pump. It could now be I'm something. Scared. And, and this, but yeah. 50,000 of you, this all spells terrorism. Uh, well, Shh. terrorism, it could be uh, somebody that actually just wants to do harm onto other people. It could just yeah. be a malicious person. Sure. I mean, who's the person that throws razor blades into the, uh, you know, the bouncing Sandbox, balls over right. at McDonald's? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So well, it, it, right, sure. And, and yeah. I, think, I think the other thing. It's never a girl. No, <laughs> no it's, it's always some guy with a hoodie sweatshirt, isn't it? It's a whacked out guy. Um, the the you know the interesting part of that is is you start you start thinking in terms of um, wow. is it too late? Is our stuff already gone? No. I mean, and and so and, no. and let's turn that to the yeah. consumer. Um, because cybercrime, and we're going to talk to... I'm going to keep you for a little bit longer. Can you stay yeah, for no, a little bit? Because uh, and, and, and Steve's going to join us here. I got to go. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We don't leave him anymore. <laughs> but the, the point I'm trying to make is, as consumers now, I've seen a couple of articles since I met you. I've seen a couple of uh, visuals. Mm. And the, the biggest thing I'm seeing, and I keep on saying this, my bigger concern is not about the U.S. government and our mm. military. I, I feel that we're that we're on top of it there. I mean, even even whether you like this administration or not, and and I don't. Know, I'm personally not a big fan either. But <laughs> the point is, he did say cyber terrorism is the number one threat to our country. So at least mm. we're on the tip of the spear there. We know what's going on. Yeah. The the other problem though is that is that um, it's the consumer, mm -hmm. it's us, right. it's our money and our power. Right. And I mean our power. I mean our lives. Yep. So I want to I want to delve into that after the break because I sure. think I think that's kind of where I think that's where the rubber meets the road for most of us is that okay yep. well you know if have we already when we were on CompuServe in 1995 that's or we were on America yeah. Online or Prodigy have we already given all of our information away and I think that's part of it hey let me do a quick visit to the numbers before we get back but Eric Basu is with us he's with CentechGlobal.com <laughs> he is our cybersecurity expert here in the Big Biz show I got to put his face up on the website now because I because I, I feel like every time there's there's going to be a story on a cyber attack about finance we got to call you guys up and talk about it. In studio with us again, Eric Basu, who is now turned into our cybersecurity expert. You got you got fan mail from all over the country coming in again, basically. <laughs> or so, is it? And we were going to keep him for 20 minutes, and now <laughs> we're on minute number 45. Um, and, and the good news is, is on Friday, we're going to have... A whole uh, show. Ho well, Holly Smithson from the Cyber Center of Excellence here in San Diego who Eric co-founded, and, and mm -hmm. I, do I call you a co-founder? I call you a... Yes, Centex co-founder of okay. the Cyber Center of Excellence. Is going to be in the studio as well to talk. So this is cyber. This is our cybersecurity special number two. Yeah. And we're going to continue this every couple of weeks because it gets better and better. Now, Eric, one thing we talked about before we went to the break yep. was about the fact that the tip of the spear here, I feel, is safe. Mm -hmm. Just as a consumer, I think the military has it figured out. This administration, whether you like them or not, has already identified cyber terrorism as, 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 right. as a number one cyber threat. But the rest of us lemmings, the rest of us fish here, don't really get the fact that we are, uh, don't really get the fact that we're in trouble. Yep. Until you see a, a, tar a target thing, or yeah. until we see a DMV thing, or something like right. that. How bad is it? 
uh, it gets worse every day. And the reason is that he the sounds like Steve, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> news, right around falling. the corner. Oh the my goodness! Falling. The uh, the attack surface, which is uh, the different points at which a bad guy can get you, increase daily. Uh -huh. So every time you download a new app to your phone to be able to access your bank account, every time you um, download, a, you know, you you, tr you find a new way in order to be able to. Uh, access your investments online right. um, every time you put your personal information out there mm -hmm. with something that you wouldn't want to have go public uh, you increase the attack surface by which somebody can get to you okay so okay so then let's be realistic about this the minute we bought our first price club computer uh -huh. with prodigy on it and went right. on CompuServe yeah. and tried to find a date they knew us they had our crap and they've ha they haven't they had our stuff for so long as consumers i mean is it just too late or what I mean, what's the point now there's a lot more crap out there right now. So, I mean, right now, if you wanted to, you can have everything out there uh, and somebody can take it and they can impersonate you. Mm -hmm. They can take your assets. Uh, they can uh, cause a harm to you. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, but it's, it's you, there are ways to protect yourself. And it's like I was saying right. is that if you grow up in a bad neighborhood, then you have a better idea of when you shouldn't be walking down the street and when you should be no. walking down I the street. I think overall as consumers, yeah. when you hear things like the DMV attack and you hear the thing like Target, I think we're being more, I guess, uh, aware of it yes but what scares me is that i want to come back to the full circle again and that is the fact that these are not just happenstance things they are tr you're seeing them coming at us right how many times a day would you say the typical retail environment on a national level right let's call it a macy's let's call it a nordstrom right. let's call it a target right how many times are they being attempted per day is there any way to even know that yeah or, yeah. or, or is it a daily thing at all uh, no, it's definitely a daily thing. Um, okay. If you're if you're somebody like Macy's or you're somebody like Target, uh -huh. you have uh, information that is worth money. So each credit card record can sell for let's say four dollars an uh, uh, you know a record on the black market. And if somebody can go in there and take it, uh, then that they're going to make an awful lot of money. Right. Um, you know, it's like uh, you know you could you could call them hardworking industrious criminals. Yeah, <laughs> but they are economically driven. This uh, is the new bank robber. This uh, is the, yes. this is the new Ocean's Eleven guy that's drilling at the bottom of the of, of the and blowing up the safe. You're exactly Jesse right, Jesse James. You're exactly right. Yeah. And and yeah. so l let me ask you this: How do you think we're doing as far as I mean? Obviously, Centec, your business is that. Right. Are you ahead of the curve as an industry? Do you think, or are there firms like you that are ahead of the curve? Right. And other people are not. The, I think that we, uh, we're we aware of the danger, and we're trying to educate other people on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that industry as a whole isn't quite aware of it. Um, you know, the uh, target was compliant, uh, but they weren't secure very clearly. Uh, I think a lot of companies uh, feel that, well, I have met my compliance standards, whether it's PCI, it's whatever their compliance standards are, but they aren't secure. They can See, but this hacked. is not a fire marshal drill. That's the problem. <laughs> no. This is not about having enough smoke detectors in the building. Exactly. I think that, I mean, because if you really play this videotape out, Yep. It comes down to this. It comes down to the fact that you've got, not only has your, your client's been breached, yep. you've been breached, which yep. causes, which, first of all, so you've got internal losses to your clients that you've got right. to deal with. Then you've got to deal with the time suck, the lost productivity. Right. But, but this, then you've got to deal with the lawsuits. Yep. I mean, you're I mean oh it just boy. feeds yep. on itself. Snowballs, yeah. I mean, it, it's to the point where it just feeds on itself. Right. And that's, and that's the scary part for me. And I think that's where companies, um, they have not been woken up enough. I mean, we hear things like Target. We hear things like the other uh, five companies, including Neiman Marcus, that were also hacked. I think once the insurance companies end up paying a billion dollars, when they make a $1 billion payout, I think that that's when you're going to find that uh, you're having uh, real... Yep. If you if you play the bad guy, though, and you get in, do you call and go, hey, Macy's, we're in, you idiots. <laughs> Why don't you, you yeah, know, I mean, hire so me now? Or, or well, so it depends on the bad guys. So hacktivists yeah. will. Hacktivists that want to bring down somebody in order to make a point, yeah. they'll do that. Um, they'll bring down Hacktivist. a company. Hacktivist. I love it. Hacktivist. Oh, yeah. nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay, was. so before I let you out of here, i got to ask this. <laughs> sure. Give me an example. When you guys go and you do a penetration test. Yes. Let's say you were going to go to, I don't care what the business is. Do you go out there and, like, make fake phone calls like you're my aunt? Uh, it depends on what they ask. Kettle Fall, Washington, and sure. you're trying to, you know, Sully's cat's dead. What was the name of the cat again? I mean, is that? Do you guys go to that point? Sure, that's a portion called uh, social engineering, which is absolutely part of a good penetration test, an organizational penetration test. Uh, if the client wants us to do that, we never do anything without the client's permission. Mm. Um, you, you can't do that; it's it's illegal. So the clients give you full permission. So you go through with the client exactly what you want them to do, and then yes, you'll do that. You'll send them mm. fake emails. You will uh, talk to the um, secretary and try and uh, see if you can get her to give you her boss's password. Uh huh. Yeah. This is oh. what I want. I Sounds like do. a fun game, I, I know. <laughs> I want to do. I want to do a one-hour special and go there with them. <laughs> and I want to be. Uh, one, I want to sit, major, I wanna sit um, next to one whatever. of those. Guys. We can be those guys. Gosh. 
I mean, you might as to, well. But the, but that guy that does that part. Yeah. So you have to have different personalities. I'm assuming. I mean, you've got to have that right. guy that's willing to fill in the little boxes. You know, the the, the stereotypical geeky right. guy. But then you also got you got to have some guy that can sell an ice cube to an Eskimo. It's a unique personality, and it's and sometimes and sometimes <laughs> I know my <laughs> next job. <laughs> You're in. You're hired. I can sell ketchup to a woman in a white dress. I'm doing, this is going to be my part time deal. Well, it's Sullivan hacktivist. And it's a team of people sometimes too. Yeah. The same guy that'll be sitting there trying to bang on the database and trying to figure out what that exact uh, SQL injection attack is going to be that's going to be able to uh, dump all the data that he wants to get to is not the same person necessarily that's going to go sweet talk a secretary. So it's a team of people. Yeah. It's not unlike, yeah, you remember A-Team. I mean, very, you know, everybody's got their role. Do we remember A-Team? <laughs> <laughs> it takes a Come team. Come on. <laughs> Nobody does it. So, but, but it's, um, the interesting part is, I always thought you would take, I thought you would, I never thought you would take the, I thought you'd take the approach of defense. Yes. Not offense. And, and, and the point is, you guys are an offense. I mean, you guys are an offense-driven protection company. We that's what we do. There are a lot of companies that do defense. Um, the RSA conference, for example, as mm -hmm. opposed to the Black Hat conference, which is about the people that are attackers, good guy attackers. Mm -hmm. The RSA conference is all about the defenders. So there are, yeah. there are people on both sides. The good thing is when we finish, we give the uh, clients a report on exactly what they need to fix. Yeah. And so they have very specific uh, um, uh, tasks in order to. You're going to be great in this job. You're offensive all the time. <laughs> I know. I am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think I, 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 actually, I actually think I would be fantastic <laughs> in this job. I think somehow. Both. Who needs the team? It's right. me. Yeah. You're over here. I'll get us in. I'll get I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll find out. Oh, honey. I'll get the password. You guys Love go from here. Here's That's some funny. ketchup. Let me oh just my catch gosh. your number again. Eric, thank you so much so again, man. I appreciate you. it. Eric uh, okay, wow. Eric Basu is the CEO of Centech Global. Centechglobal.com is the name of the company. And uh, Yeah, and you uh, won't Global. sleep tonight, will you? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, the good news is he's there. The bad news is that we need him, is the issue. But as uh, you're gonna see more and more of Eric, as these stories come up, we're going to uh, we're gonna take advantage of Eric's uh, Eric's knowledge and uh, and see if we can, uh, you know, kind of get some insight on how to be protected.